I shall not. Look at the last word, want. Somebody say want. The word want means lack. So what he's really saying to me, what David is really saying, because Jesus is my shepherd, I won't need anything. How many of y'all want to get to a place that you know that Jesus got you so much that you don't need nothing in 2023? Will they cry out to God and say, you are a burden lifter. God, you are my shepherd that I don't want for anything. God, you are the head. And I'm not the tail. You are the lifter up of my head. That's how you know and find out about me. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house. Now, what I'm going to be teaching tonight is probably the closest thing to my life that I lived for many years. This thing hits home. And some of y'all have hit home for you. How many of y'all know this? And how, many of how many of y'all know that when you try to please everyone, nobody pleases you? They don't remember you. They don't remember what you've done for them. They use you and keep on moving. So tonight I want to talk with you about it. And I want you to pay very close attention. Uh, and we're going to learn tonight that you can't please everyone. Because how many of y'all know sometimes you find out who you're trying to please and who they really are? We live in a society that Everybody forgets who's been there for them. I mean, I don't tell the truth. Children forget. Family members forget. People that you're connected to forget. People you've been over forget. They just forget. And so I want to deal with this today about pleasing everyone and this is not a sermon for you to and it's not a sermon a bible study for you to diss people because when you're a people pleaser there's something you got to learn you're going to pay a greater price for not listening to the right people more than you are listening to the wrong people you know people say well you know when you listen to the wrong people you know you get bad advice or what no 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 you do but you pay a greater price when you do not listen to the right people in your life. You hear me? You might not think so, but it happens. So here's a statement I want you to see. Put my first statement up there. Is that James back there? Put my first statement up there for me, James. I cannot give you a formula for success, but I can give you the formula for failure. Try to please everybody. How many don't tell the truth? Better make a notation of that. People say, well, I, I don't run around trying to please nobody. You're lying to yourself. Everybody trying to please somebody. Right? You ain't trying to please the wrong person you don't hooked up with. They got your whole relationship with God being tainted. Because if you ain't pleasing God, you're pleasing something. I'm going to tell the truth. So I cannot give you the formula for success, but I can give you the formula for failure. There's a gentleman. His name is Jason Whitlock. I didn't have time to, had a long counseling today, but I didn't have time to put his picture up. But Jason Whitlock is probably one of the best sport reporters you've ever seen in terms of writing. Uh, his articles are incredible, but one of the things about Jason Whitlock is that he's extremely blunt. Uh, he's not very kind with his words when he's making an opinion about something that he noticed. So he noticed something that we all probably got to think about. I want to talk about a gentleman 
Hopefully most of you know of him or you heard of him. His name is Deion Sanders. How many have heard Deion Sanders? They said probably one of the greatest cornerbacks to ever play the game. He's one of them. Um, quarterbacks hate throwing his way because his speed was so, he has such great speed that he could recover from anything. And there was a good chance he was going to knock the ball down to get an interception, but they called him prime time because he lacks a lot of attention. No, he did. But actually, he's a people pleaser. See, when you require a lot of attention, you're a people pleaser. Whether you want to admit it or not. When you always got to be the center of attention, when you always got to be an overkill, you're a people pleaser. No, no, that's not a people pleaser. Yes, it is. That's a person that's trying to get attention, trying to get more recommendation or more celebration than they should have. But as Dion's career went on, he goes to a black university, historically black college, he turns that school around, takes him to the black national championship several times. He turns the whole school around in terms of football team and then last year he goes to University of Colorado <laughs> he goes from going to a historically black college to a division one school that's a whole different ball game hmm. they don't care nothing about you being black they don't care nothing about you being white all they care about is winning of course, they started out the season doing pretty good. Everybody thought that they were going to end up being a national championship team because he had taken the program that was absolutely horrible. And they thought that he was going to turn the whole program around in one year. It started out good. But how y'all know it ended up bad? His record went from three and one to four and eight. He begins to get a lot of criticism. Let me give you this about people pleasers. So this gentleman, Jason Whitlock, does an article. In his article, he makes this statement, and then I'm going to go straight into the teaching, but I am doing this. I'm going to get you into the scriptures in a second, but Jason Whitlock says today, Deion Sanders needs to resign. No, not Deion Sanders. Not prime time. Watch, watch why he's saying he resign. resign. He said he can't take criticism. He exhibits a level of insecurity. He's unbefitting to be a leader. Criticizing him causes him to not want to answer questions. He becomes defiant. He doesn't like to deal with being questioned, which you know for a fact that when you're a head football coach, part of the rule is that you have to answer questions from the media, even if you don't like because it, it comes with the job. He said he needs to resign and he needs to get out of that level of football and go back to the level he was at because he's not ready for the pressure. Y'all didn't catch that. People pleasers are people that can't take pressure. They can't take correct criticism. They're hypocrites because they want to correct everybody but can't nobody correct them. It's called double standards. Come on, y'all help me out. How many of those people like that? They, can, they got so much to say about everybody else, but you can't tell them about them. It's, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. So he said he needs to step down because even though he has the ability to coach the kids, he's not a good example of how to deal with criticism. 
and yet still believe that he can take this team to what he want to take it to. Well, I've been pastoring 34 years. I've been pastoring, been in ministry since 1980, so it's been 44 years. I've seen many things. I was a people pleaser. Didn't want to hurt nobody. Didn't want nobody to be disappointed in me, like some of y'all are. You probably never admit it, but I'll talk about me tonight. I'll be transparent about me. And once people know you're a people pleaser, they know that they can use you. They know they can say anything to you that they won't say to somebody else, even as a pastor. One of the most difficult jobs in pastoring the church is dealing with folk that have lost respect for you. It's called the sins of familiarity. They feel like they can walk up and approach you and say anything with no regard to what your position is. They've lost honor for you. So this pastor preached this sermon a member walked up to him and said, y'all need to know this, because some of y'all don't understand it. Y'all, y'all, it's easy for you to sit in the chairs and be so self-righteous, because you ain't got to be up here. It looks easy. Y'all think all we do is get up here and preach a little sermon. I was telling the Paul Jr., I said, I preached 17 times in 22 five days in different locations 17 times and every one of them, them want you to hear the Lord they don't want me getting up and just preaching they have an expectation that what you say God is saying we brought you to the church we need to make sure that what you preach and God said it so this pastor preaching preached his congregation he thought he did well and one of his members walked up to him and said to him, Pastor, I got to tell you something. And he said, yes. Today was not your best sermon. Matter of fact, your sermon wasn't good at all. I don't know, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. I thought I'd have felt dead if I'd have walked up and told the pastor that. But we're different people now. I mean, we're a different group of people now. We've lost the reverence even for God in the man. Even if you don't like the man, you should, well, if you don't like us, you shouldn't be honest. So, this is where you know, even if it's hidden, I understand because I can relate. He's a people pleaser. What does he say? He says, Elder Nita, to the young man, says to the man, thank you for your criticism. Thank you for your honesty. And the guy like, yeah, sure, and walks away. But when the pastor got in his office, he fell to his knees and started crying. Because even though he told him to his face, I accept your criticism, he really couldn't deal with the criticism. A lot of y'all say you're stronger than you think you really are when you're in the face of somebody. But how many y'all know once you get behind closed doors? I can handle it. No, you can't. Because in front of us, in front of people, you say you can, but how many of y'all know the truth is you really can't? And even if you're not a total people pleaser, there's something in you still allow yourself to become very disappointed that people are not happy with you in everything. Anybody, anybody want to tell the truth? You know, people purposely know how to make you understand. I don't think much of you. Y'all know that, right? People know how to look you up and down. and You know how to look up and down, they need to tell you you're beautiful. That look up and down is like... You know how many times I've seen that as a pastor? Yes. In 34 years, I've seen it thousands of times. I say to myself, wow, you're a bold demon. 
That's a demon. But remember this. People always need to find something wrong with somebody so they can feel better for themselves. They always need to look at you. You, 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 you ain't never had a time in your life where somebody judge you and say you think you all that and don't even know you. Oh, you got something on new today. Why you got to say something? Why don't you just say I look nice? Why don't you just say I'm nice looking? Oh, you got something new on there? When they got something new? Okay, when you have on something new, do you want somebody to say that to you? That's the kind of society we live in. So, put up for me an easy worship, Proverbs 29 and 25, you heard it. Put it up for me in the NIV in the message. Everybody pull it up, 29, Proverbs 29, 25. We're going to talk about this, and I hope today that this lesson will teach you. I hope you're open to correct criticism because if not, you're a people pleaser. You say, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. If you don't want nobody to criticize you correctly, you're a people pleaser. Because you don't want no one to see that you're not perfect. I got three amens on that one. How I many y'all know you? A lot of us want people to think we're perfect. And even if they pretend and believe that we're perfect, how I many y'all know when they walk away, that ain't what they're thinking? Everybody talks about somebody. And you ain't excluded. Can't please everyone. And if you live your life trying to please everyone and not please the right one, him first. That's the right one to be pleasing first. And if you got good people in your life that love you enough to tell you the truth, you need to listen. I mean, I'm telling the truth. You need to listen if you got the right people. So Proverbs 25, 29 and 25, I guess they don't have it up. So Apostle Junior, you have it. You got your microphone. Would you read it in the NIV? I want to just show you what I'm talking about when it comes down to people being people pleasers and how it's important it is. I had a two and a half hour meeting today dealing with someone who I wanted to understand how important it is to understand that when you become a people pleaser. And you say, well, no. <laughs> There's a portion in your life that when someone can make you disobey God, they're making you please them more than God. That makes you a partial peace pleaser. Right, granddaughter? She's, huh? That's why I love her so much. See, when you when you someone that no matter what, you can accept the truth, you can make it anyway. You can be successful when you are open to the truth. How many of y'all know that? You can be successful when you're open to the truth. You can't be successful when can't nobody tell you nothing. And even though you don't know it, you're still getting told something anyway. <laughs> so Proverbs 29 and 25, read it for me. I don't know what they're going on with the screen, but would you read it for me, Apostle Junior? Fear of man will prove to be a snare. A fear of man will prove to be a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So you notice that there's a fear of man, but in this other version it says what? When you have a mindset that you want to please man, you're afraid of man. When man knows that you're afraid of his opinions, he knows that he's going to make you fall into a trap. You're going you're gonna to set a trap up for yourself. When man realizes that you cannot deal with their negativity, their opinion of you, their slander of you, they set you up to fall. It begins to affect your life. You find yourself diminishing because people know, everybody knows who can't handle because they're so afraid. They want to please everybody. I live that life. And God let me go through. He let me go through to people that I loved that was there in every capacity who I thought that really loved me. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. He said, not who you gonna please. Not who you gonna please. 
Now who you gonna make them change your opinion about you now? <laughs> How you gonna hold your head up now with all them stuff? I let it happen. He knew I was a people pleaser. He knew I wanted to make everybody happy. You know, I didn't want to make nobody's feelings get hurt. And it's like, you can't lead a church like that. <laughs> Not with normal people. How many of y'all know some of y'all battle that? Put your hands up. Come on. How many of y'all know you battle that? Come on. Yeah. It's a trap. It's a setup. It's going to ruin your life. You ain't got to say amen tonight. I'm still going to talk about it. I'm not a people pleaser no more, so it don't matter. Y'all can't get to me like that no more. I know who I am in God. Come on, somebody. Yeah. To hear a fear of human opinion, look what it says. Disable. Did y'all see that? How many of y'all think you don't been disabled in situations because you were so bothered by people opinion? Am I saying something tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trusting in God protects you from that. He said the only way you can be delivered from man's opinion, I got to get your trust level up in me. I've always walked by faith. God has always used me mightily, but internally, I was a people pleaser. And then when God let me go through, it don't matter. Man. I still got the love. I'm still going to love you. I'm just not going to be controlled by your opinions. Some of y'all are... <laughs> Especially wrong opinions. I'm open to advice. I'm open to good things. I'm, I'm even open to correct criticism, but I'm not open to opinions. Especially people who ain't never preach. <laughs> Especially about you ain't never passed a new church. I don't know what you got so much to say about. I did the same thing you did when I was in the pews. I wouldn't have never done that. But how many of y'all know when you get up here, you find out when you get in a position, there are things that you say you would never do. How many of y'all know you'll darn do it? How many of y'all have said that about your parent? I ain't gonna be child. I'm not gonna have a pa parent like you. And how many y'all find out you are just like them? Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to Brill get pregnant. I want to see how she gonna. <laughs> can't wait to her, her and Johnny. His real name is Jonathan, but my, I call him Johnny. Johnny Quest, he on a quest right now. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's Bobby's son. My, my papa man. All right, okay, here we go. So what's, what's the first thing to come to your mind when you say, I, when I say to you, I don't think you can please everyone, what's the first thing to come to your mind? You're like, yeah, you can and so then you hear the statement of people, these people that do what they call self-made. Yeah, you can't please everyone, so please yourself. But isn't that a little bit on the narcissistic side? Doesn't it make you narcissistic when you're one of those kind of people that nobody can't tell me nothing, and I'm about me, and about myself, and I'm going to please myself? Don't that make you sort of so narcissistic and controlling? Because that doesn't make you be corrected. Do what makes you happy. No, the heck I ain't. I do some things. But some things that want to make me happy, I might want to reconsider. Y'all better come on here. I mean, you know, you can't do everything that want to make you. Because there's some stuff that want to make you happy or take you out. Amen. Y'all still with me? Yes. All right, let me move further. All right. 
Galatians 1 and 10. Do I have it up there? Do I have it? Here we go. There you go. Thank you, James. You own it. Amen. I got $5 for you, James. <laughs> Look at He said, I'll take it. All right, James. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Look what he says in Galatians 1 and 10. He said, I'm not trying to please people. I want to please God. I'm y'all, I'm y'all right now going to get that place. But I'm y'all know this lesson is really talking to us. Anybody want to wave your hand that this lesson is talking to you? Yeah, it is. Got you got a nervous condition. Trying to worry about what people think of you. I'm not trying to please people. I want to please God. Do you think I'm trying to please people? If I were doing that, I would not be a servant of Christ. This is what Paul said. See, because you can't be a servant of Christ and try to please people. You can't grow spiritually if you're trying to please people. You can't be open. Did anybody get an iPod message from me today or a podcast message? Anybody remember what I said in the message? Anybody remember? What about Revelation? With a greater level of revelation, you get a greater level of faith. Well, how are you going to get a revelation when you're pleasing people? How much revelation can you get pleasing people? I'm not trying to please people. I want to please God. Do you think I'm trying to please people? If I were doing that, I would not be a servant of Christ. That's what Paul said. Paul said, I can't be a servant of Christ. Here's a question I got for you. Put it up for me, James. Why are you willing to do almost anything to ensure that people will be pleased with you? I'm going to keep it right up there. How many of y'all know you like that? Sometimes you'll do anything to please a person. Even go against your own standards. I was kind of no, yeah, you did. And I said to her, you want to get married, but you don't even think you're marriage material. Who believes in God for a husband and you don't even know you're prepared? You're marriage material. You have to say that. You have to say that before you even get a husband. You have to say that before you get a wife. You can't be sitting up in here. You, what, what are you? Arrest somebody, rescue? I don't want to be no rescue. I don't need you to rescue me. The devil's a liar. You price above rubies. We can't afford you. The only way we can get you is through being a gift. What gift puts itself on clearance? What gift puts itself on clearance? I know the Lord priced me this way, but I'm going to lower my price so I can get me somebody. Stop poking that about say. Are you kidding me? Am I saying something? Why do you do that? Why don't you leave that question to yourself? Everybody wants approval. The only problem is that most of us don't want to admit it, but we take wanting approval too far. When you take one and approve it too far, approval becomes your idol. You begin to worship attention. You begin to worship the person that's giving you attention. They become your God. Thank you, Lord. 
Am I saying something? Yes. Come on, let's move a little further. So what are some of the traits of people pleasers? Let's talk about it. Anybody can honestly say, Anybody ever, ever been here and know the statement that we're going to move forward about the traits? How many of y'all know that when you stick your neck out for people, there's always people waiting to cut it off? As long as you live, pretty girl. As long as you live, when you stick your neck out for people, there's always someone waiting so they can cut it off. Traits of people, these are. Please be honest tonight with me and say, that's me. You ain't got to raise your hand. I'm not trying to embarrass nobody. But I want you to do a, a self-examination of yourself and say, that's me. Because when you become a people pleaser, you become tormented. I wonder what they think of me. So number one. Let's go here. Please again, this is not to make you feel bad. Don't beat yourself up. Most of us have unhealthy approval notices. You probably don't see it because it's stuck on your front door. There's an there's approval notice on your front door. It's sticking on your front door saying, hey, they're in a season where they'll do anything to get somebody to love them. Anybody can relate? You mean mugging me for Margaret? I know, I'm just getting you a hard time. I just want to see if you need to get approval. And <laughs> Not no more. You got delivered that quick. Go on, girl. I'm made mad at you. <laughs> That's my girl there. That's my girl. All right. So number one, we rarely say no. Proper boundaries are a real problem with people pleasers. You don't have any boundaries. Because you don't know how to say no. How many of y'all battle having a hard time telling people no? I lived that for years. Put your hands up high. Come on. Y'all ain't going to let me see him by myself. Put your hands up. I am not going to sin by myself. That was a sin for mine. Come on, put them up high. Let me see you. You rarely said no. Look at my wife saying, my God. <laughs> How many of y'all know that you find yourself saying yes to unrealistic and selfish ambitions? You won't take advice. That is not good advice. I don't care what nobody's saying. Ain't nobody going to stop me. People are always trying to hinder me. No, you hindering yourself because you're not open to good advice. You stop blaming people. How folk always, listen, listen, listen. In this season, when somebody's telling you, you need to say no. In this situation. How people just trying to hold me back, trying to stop me from being happy. Okay, let's go deep there. Let's go deep. Let's go deep. We're going to go here tonight. If people are trying to stop you from being happy, then guess what happened? Why haven't you been happy? Because when I look at your history, ain't much happiness in your history based on your decisions. And so in this season, you need to finally listen and say no. Because you had enough unhappiness. And God said, you keep praying you want to be happy, but you can't say no. And then you, am I right, Prophet Tilly? And then you blame people. Because we big at blaming people in the church. Y'all go out here and mess up with these old unsaved folk and hang out with them and do all kind of stuff. But guess where you come depressed at? At church. We see you outside the church, you're smiling, you're laughing with everybody else. But you come in here, you can't look at nobody, you can't smile, you can't open your mouth and speak. Stop that fake hypocritical stuff up in here. The devil is a liar up in here. I get sick of people coming to the church and making the church be the villain for their behavior. 
for this situation. We ain't got nothing to do with it. We take on requests that are not our responsibility. How many of y'all ever volunteer for stuff and you no good and well, you couldn't do it? I get on one of my daughters every time. She will volunteer for every, everybody in the church. Know, all you gonna do is call them, call that particular person. And, and I, I told her one day, I said, I'm going to kill you. I have lived that life for you. You cannot save everybody in the church. How many of y'all know? Because all they need is one person that didn't know, can't say no. Everybody goes after the person that can't say no. And they come, they, they, they come, Tracy, with some of the craziest requests. People ask you for stuff. And you'll kill yourself trying to do it. They know you ain't got it. I would tell them one of my children, but I'm not going to do it to her today. They used to say yes to everybody, didn't come get the money from me. And then they would go back and give the people the money, and the people would thank them like the money came from them. Oh, you welcome. No, the devil's a liar. We're going to stop this. <laughs> Number two, pretend. I'm hurry up. To agree with everyone. When you pretend to agree with everyone, you're overly conscious. You're so worried about them not liking you because you don't agree with them. It might terrifies you if you have to tell them, I don't agree with that. Why are you acting like that? Terrified to tell people the truth? You're overly conscious. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? So you pretend that you agree with them, but you know you don't agree with them. That's why I don't like, I don't, that's why I don't like clicks in the church, because they be pretending. Clicks pretend. They know good and darn well they don't agree with some of the stuff you're doing, but they'll sit there and act like they agree with you. You up here running amok, you up here out here acting crazy, you being disrespectful. And your little partner in crime, your little sister in crime with you, I sit there and say, girl, I understand. No, you don't. Stop telling her that lie. And say, you disrespectful, joking you. Somebody needs to be able to tell the truth to you. Father, you used to hate it with me. Stop letting them people, don't, don't make them people believe that you grew that foolishness. Be direct. I'd rather them be mad at them from the truth than let them walk away believing a lie. Anybody here tonight can deal with that? Next one. What's the next one? Go to great lengths to avoid conflict. How many of y'all have a problem with conflict? How many of y'all have a problem with it? It's, it's difficult. You're not really confrontational. Right. It's okay. Now, you know what's so crazy about it? <laughs> Let me say this quickly. We got about 20 minutes. Let me say, in my earliest days of passing this church, I was crazy. No, I really was. I will confront you in a minute. Not, some of y'all remember me, right? Come on, Khalil, you got new eyes today. Come on, let's talk about it. You got a new hairdo, Khalil. Come on, tell me about it. You looking cute. Come on, go on, you look cute today. Dre, did you tell her she look cute? Did you tell her Dre she look cute? You saw she pointed at you, did you tell me? Yeah, you did tell her. But Dre, how many y'all, okay, how many y'all remember my, my younger days? I, I was crazy. No, seriously, I, I watch the praise team now, and when they be doing certain things, 
You know the old me would do? I would turn around. What would I tell them? I would say, if y'all don't sit down, you know what? All y'all stop singing. Go somewhere and sit down somewhere. Oh, yeah, I know, Dana. I know. It's hard to believe. You a pastor Kelly? Yeah, me. Ask my sister. I would go ballistic. Go sit down. Stop singing. Y'all horrible. That was old me. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute, God. <laughs> James, I said, wait a minute, God. Let me work on my mouth. <laughs> I was like that. Very confrontational in terms of the spirit. I was always a nice guy. But I became too concerned about people's opinions. That drove me crazy. Like y'all, bless you. Let me see the hands of all y'all again that avoid conflict. You don't like it? Come on, let me see your hand. Come on, put them up high. I'm kind of shocked. Look at this, some of y'all. Bless you again. I'm kind of shocked. Because some of y'all mouthy. You afraid of conflict with your big mouth? Don't look at me like that. I said it. You got a big mouth. That's why I'm surprised you are. It, no. But you'll confront somebody in a minute with your mouth, but you scared of conflict? All right. All right, here we go. I'm going to hurry up. Fear negative emotions in others. I got y'all talking now. <laughs> I got all y'all talking now. Y'all was real quiet the first two. Everybody like, wait a minute, yeah, wait a minute now. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. That's why I did it. I did it purposely. <laughs> y'all funny. Fear negative emotions in others. How many of y'all do that? How many of you worried about how somebody's going to emotionally respond? Come on, how many of y'all like that? Now, have y'all noticed that Apostle Junior has not raised her hand on none of you? <laughs> She's sitting there telling you the truth. She's like, you heard what I said? And then she had to know to put baby on. Baby, you heard me. <laughs> now get out of my office. You heard me, baby. See, some of y'all have become hypersensitive to other people being mad at you. Who they gonna be mad at me? They gonna stop speaking to me. And you know what happens when you are, <laughs> you feel negative emotions? God allows. All right, y'all ready? I'm gonna say something strong. God allows you to be connected to people when you are fearful of their emotions you'll normally find out you're going to have one main moody person in your life. Maybe somebody you love a lot, but they moody as I don't know what. And they only show the moves mostly around you. Because they know you got a fear. What's the matter? Nothing. Now they just got off the phone laughing, but when they come around you, they're all depressed. They're all low self-esteem. Just got through laughing with their relative, just got through laughing with their friends, but they come around you, can't talk. Because they know what? They know you're afraid of their emotions, so they know you're going to be like, what's the matter? Walk past you, don't speak. Yeah. Purposely to make you be emotionally, what have I done wrong? Because see, that's the next one there. When not only do you feel negative emotions about others, but you feel responsible how they feel. And people know how to make you be responsible how they feel, because they know how to dish you. I watch him do it to me. Now I don't care. I know you purpose not speaking to me so you get a response out of me. Keep right on going. And then when they get in the car, I'll be like, Father, let angels be around them so they don't die. Somebody say amen. Let angels be around them so they don't die. Trying to play games with the pastor.
You'll notice one other person is just like Apostle Junior. She never raised her hand either. Keisha. Everybody knows. She's very loving, but she's not moved. One day I even tried to fall on the floor and start crying. She wasn't even moved by me. She's like, Dad, what you doing down there on the floor? Get on up off that floor. Keep ain't even vacuuming me yet. You're going to get stuff on you. I'm down here throwing a fit. She's like, Dad, get up off that floor. Quit playing. Okay, it don't work for you either. <laughs> when you feel responsible for how others feel, it is coming for people pleasers to take responsibility and start saying it's my fault. Husband and wife come home in a bad mood. They know that you are one of them people that are so concerned about how they feel. They start changing your feelings. Whole house atmosphere change. You all right? No, I ain't all right. You want to talk about it? Now I don't want to talk about it. So I'm going to be left alone. They know you're going to follow them in the room. Uh-oh. Can I do something? No, you can't do anything. Just a new rule. I ain't trying to be funny. Just a new rule when they like that. You follow them to the room, and when they open the door, this is what you do. You let them out, let them in the room, and then you close the door for them and you go back to your side of the house and let them have their little day. Come on, somebody say amen. Because you ain't gonna have me chasing you and have me all schizophrenic and have me all mentally messed up and have me all going crazy. Take your little behind right on up in there. Got something for you, baby. Cause that's Pop Junior with me. If I have one in the mood, I'll be sure like, you all right? No, I'm all right, I'm all right. Are you sure, Gregory? I'm all right. She's all right. You said you was all right. <laughs> nah, she ain't that bad. Listen. She said, help him, Jesus. Now, she'll keep trying. It ain't often because I'm not moody. It ain't often. I'm not unhappy. I'm most of the time very happy. I like being happy. I don't, I don't like a depressed house. I don't like walking around the house depressed. We can't walk around the house and not speak to each other. It's not going to be right. I, I can't live like that. Girl, you better say something. Amen. You don't say nothing but your food ready. You better talk. You better say something. No, we're not doing that. No, I'm not. I don't know how people do that. Walk around the house and marry and they don't speak to each other. Days at a time. Are you crazy? You disobedient. Scripture said, don't let the sun come down to your wrath. You that mad? All right. Hey, look at a couple more scriptures. Can I say that? We'll come back. Matthew 27, 22 to 26. Here's a people pleaser. Here's Pilate getting ready, having Jesus arrested. Jesus on trial. He's the governor. Look what he said. Pilate asked him, what am I to do because the people, what, with Jesus, who is called the Messiah, they all yelled, nail him to the cross. Nail him to a cross. Pilate answered, but what crime has he done? Nail him to a cross. They yelled even louder. Even when you're innocent, people yell louder to force you to follow their decision because they want to see you destroyed. Y'all ain't never seen that before? Y'all ain't never seen that? Me and Apostle Junior Yelling loud. Lying. Yelling loud. Take them out. God gonna shut the church down. The devil is a liar. Okay. Now watch this coward. 
Watch this coward, because sometimes people please us are cowards. He knew that what they were doing, because look what he said. He said, Paul saw there was nothing he could do that the people started to riot. So he took some water and washed his hands in front of them and said, I have, I won't have anything to do with killing this man, because he knows this man is innocent. He said, are the one thing, ones doing it. Everyone answered, we and our own family would take the blame for his death. You see how bold people are when they want to see you destroyed? They'll say, shoot, God killed me, I don't care. As long as I see them out. Yes. They say, well, and our children. We'll take the blame for it. Now here's Pilate letting go a real robber. The one that's got the crime is let go free. Then he ordered soldiers to beat Jesus with a whip and nail him to the cross. Coward. Sometimes people pleasers are cowards. They won't confront the right thing. They won't do the right thing. Everybody likes to follow the crowd, whatever the crowd is saying, even if it's wrong. It's all against scripture. They don't care. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. Am I saying something tonight, somebody? All right, I got eight, nine minutes. Let me hurry up. I live this. You have to learn how to play an audience of one because here's something I want you to understand. To break the, now this is going to be really strange, but I'm going to tell you the truth. This is how I broke it. To break the people pleasing spirit off your life, you have to learn to develop the ability to laugh at yourself. Oh, you do that? Yeah, got to keep doing it. You got to know how to laugh at yourself. Say, you know, that was stupid. I mean, just laugh about it. I let myself get messed up. That was dumb. Laugh about it. Hey, what else, I mean, what else can you do? I mean, you, you deal with the consequences, you say, hey, you got to laugh about it. People say, well, that, that, does that mean a lack of repentance? No, that means that I've come to the conclusion. I had a stupid moment. And then laugh at yourself. Sometimes you got to laugh at yourself before people laugh at you. You just got to laugh at yourself before people say that. That way when they say it, it don't hurt. Hmm? But y'all so worried. Y'all so worried. You ain't always got to go back and forth with people. To prove you're not people please. You ain't got to go back and forth. I ain't arguing with you all the time. For what? What arguments do? It's not going to prove nothing. Go and say what you got to say, honey. Do your little snapping. Go take your nap. Somebody say amen. I ain't going through all that. I ain't going to be getting no fights with you, cussing, like no food for what? You take yourself too seriously. How many of y'all have seen people, they just all the time mad, always want to fight about something? You take yourself too seriously. You take yourself too seriously. You have what they call inflated superiority. You think more of yourself than you should. This ain't no laughing matter. Funny to me? I don't find this funny right now. I do. I find it funny, but I don't find it funny. <laughs> well, get out of the room. Because I'm going to keep laughing. Matter of fact, I'm going to laugh harder. <laughs> you came to, listen, it's tough around this church. <laughs> Y'all know that. You got to have tough skin in this church because they'll laugh at you all day long. Especially Ella Wakita, she laughs at you all day long, fall on the floor. I really believe that Keita should live her life driving her car with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand having a teacup. And hold the teacup because she always got tea. Somebody say amen. She should come to work, come in the door with a teacup in her hand. 
Her and Keisha. Somebody say amen. Keisha, don't be trying to act like you're innocent. You ain't innocent. Uh-huh. You thought I was going to let her get away with you. just a nice person. No, you be having tea too, Keisha. Matter of fact, Keisha have the cup, Keisha have the mug. Somebody say amen. <laughs> John 4 and 34, y'all, I got four minutes. Jesus said, my food is to do what God wants. He is the one who sent me and I must finish the work that he gave me to do. You have to get to a place to know, okay, I can't be pleasing people because guess what? When I'm pleasing people, I can't please God. You really got to develop the ability to just laugh at yourself. Here's the last one. I won't go over all the traits. We ain't got time. We got three minutes. But here, here's something I want you to see. It's St. Luke. And we're going to close on this. Thank y'all. Anybody we're blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Right? Come on. St. Luke 22. Here we go. All right. Let's close on this here. Again, people pleaser. That's why a lot of Christians today, when they live in the church, they're one thing. And when they get in the world, they're another. They're people pleasers. They're afraid to be who they are in God because they worry about what the world thinks. So they go out there, they're in the church, they one thing, and they go out in the world and do worldly activities because they're people pleasers. They're afraid to be who they are. Here's a prime example. That's why you see it so much. You see so many. And I'm telling y'all, we get into that season that Jonah going to show up. And God going to show up with the Jonah and the people you out there hanging out with gonna come to church and get delivered while you out there hanging out with them. And they're gonna leave you out there with them and you're gonna be looking around like, and they're gonna be up here in the church. I'm telling you, because people want God now more than you think. So closing this. Jesus was arrested, led away to the house of the high priest while Peter followed at a distance. People, please, always don't want nobody to know you with them. That's what people these are in the church are like. They don't, they, when you ask them about God, they, they don't talk well. They don't talk very loud. They don't talk very boastful. They don't have boldness. It's like, you say, yeah. See, when I grew up, folk that were saved, them folk let you know they were safe. They be blessing the food like today. We don't even probably pray the food in public, you know, because we don't want nobody to know that, right? So you, we don't have, most of us don't even pray about food yeah, in public, right? We don't want to admit it, but I leave it alone, right? And so, you know, but back then, them jokers be praying over their food. Man, they have a full service. And Father, thank you. Woo! <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Jane, right? God, I want you to take this broccoli. Twist it up, God. I thank you for this macaroni and cheese. Pork chops. Put your hands on it, God. Lay your hands on these ribs. I know when I eat them, God, they're going to be good, but I know they're going to bless my body. Now, this is how folk pray now. Thank you, Lord, for this food. Amen. Worry about what somebody say. But you turn it up when you got your alcohol. You got no problem with everybody know you drink it. Hey, y'all, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. But you won't. Oh, let me leave that alone. Thank you, sweetheart. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all are afraid to let nobody know what you're doing. That ain't God. But we are afraid to let people know what we do in God. Okay, we got to go. Some people build a fire in the middle of the country yard, courtyard, and we're sitting around it. Peter sat there with them. He sat there with them. Come on, I got, we're over. He sat there with them. What does that mean? He was hiding. How many Christians hide today? Y'all hide out there with unsafe folk. And saw a young, saw a servant, and a servant girl saw him. Then after she she had looked at him carefully, she said, "This man was with Jesus." Y'all get ready. They get ready to do that, to us. Don't you go to restoration? And a an apostle they're like take take what you're doing over there in the corner <laughs> don't you go wait a minute when you raised up with apostle Kelly them yeah but born in the church yeah okay got a word for us Tay Tay 
You got a word for him, JJ? Girl, please. <laughs> <laughs> I believe her. Look at that. Peter said, woman, I don't even know that man. Y'all think that's going on today? People please us. Act like we don't know who God is in our life. A little later, someone else saw Peter and said, you are one of them. No, I'm not, Peter replied. Now, the first lady, she didn't notice him because of his appearance. She didn't notice him but Paul because of hanging out this one here looked at Jesus looked at Peter and said I know you one of them I seen you with him I seen you go to restoration ain't you on the praise team look at Jalen like I am about an hour later another man insists this man have must have been with Jesus they both came from Galilee you know what that man saying you look just like Jesus. Uh oh, come on, somebody. Oh, let, come on, give Lord a great big hand clap. Let me close on that. Yeah. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, This is an unshakable house.